What's up everyone, it's Kenji here and in this video I want to break down a day in the life of a Goldman Sachs intern. So just to give some context, I previously worked at Goldman Sachs in their investment banking division in New York City, so that's what the day in the life is going to be about. As for the internship itself, it was about 10 weeks long and I've also made some videos on my Goldman Sachs resume as well as some cover letter tips. If you want to take a look at those, I'll leave them up here. Now, before we get into a day in the life, I do want to mention that at Goldman Sachs, within their investment banking division, there's actually a split between advisory and financing. So in advisory, these are things like M&A, activism, defense, restructuring, whilst what's called financing has to do with structure finance, leverage finance, equity offerings, other things like that. So basically, financing is more tied to the financial markets, meaning that they do have to come a bit earlier and finish maybe a bit earlier than those in advisory. So for the work hours, they're actually fairly similar between the two, about 16 hour days more or less for junior people. But that said, if I had to pick one, probably advisory works a slight bit more, right? All right, so let's get into the day in the life. On average, I'd say it was around 15 to 16 hours that I worked every day. That said, because I was on the financing side, I did come in slightly earlier at around 7.15, 7.30, all the way to around 11.30. I'd obviously take a couple breaks here and there to grab coffee or have lunch or dinner if I wasn't too busy, say. All right, so let's get into the details of what actually happens during a 16 hour day. So I typically would aim to get up around 6.30 and by 7.15 I did aim to be at the office. I only had a short commute because I was living in a student dorm, so that was fairly convenient and I'll try to get a grab a snack along the way. Then at 7.15 to around 8.30 this was time for me to catch up on my emails and then start, start to do some research as I had a presentation every morning at 8.30 which uh, we actually alternated between interns it was essentially a market update, right? So it was basically in front of the whole team and we had to debrief them on a couple of things that had happened the night prior or what to expect during the day. So it would take me about an hour to actually find the relevant news. And typically I would do it on Bloomberg. If you haven't heard, it's called the Bloomberg Terminal. And that's basically the financial news platform that everyone uses. It's really pricey. Um, it does cost around 24,000 a year. It's a subscription based model. Um, but basically they have all of the necessary financial information there and if they're willing to pay that much then it's obviously very valuable. And there I would look at things like how the interest rates have moved because that's going to uh, affect the different types of things like equities, bonds, derivatives, not just in the US but also in other markets where we might be working. Then something else might be political things, right? So for instance, if there's an election happening at a certain point, I do want to try to mention that and say how that might affect the markets. So it's really a proper debrief that might last anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. And it's essentially from 8.30 to 8.45 and there's a Q&A after it. So between 8.45 and 9, I would try to grab a coffee and basically just get myself ready for the day. So between 9 and 11, I would usually be at my desk and actually get started with the work that I might have. And just to give you a, a, a bit of background, basically within the investment banking division, there's different hierarchies. Obviously, the summer analyst is at the very bottom, me in this case. Then after that, you get the analyst. Then you get what's called an associate, then a vice president, and lastly, a managing director. And then there's partners and others, but that usually we didn't really see them. So MD was usually the person, the highest person that we saw. As you can imagine, there's a lot less MDs than there are analysts, right? That makes sense. So basically most of the interactions I had were with analysts and associates. So for instance, I would have a PowerPoint ready for the analyst and he would give me a couple corrections, which I would then take on during that time and, and try to make the changes. And they might be things like, hey, instead of putting a pie chart here, let's try a column chart because that's probably going to be more be a better representation of the data. Or, hey, make sure you check this number again. It doesn't quite look right to me. And other things like that, mainly kind of combining Excel and PowerPoint. And let's say that on a good day, I'll just be able to actually do the work. But sometimes, because basically everyone on top of me is my boss, if you're a summer analyst, there's all sorts of things that come up and people might ask some, for some urgent help uh, last minute before their meeting at 12 or something. And so it's not always that smooth, say. And between 11 and 12, I'd usually get on some internal calls with some of the senior bankers where basically they'd be talking about what's called a live deal. So a deal that's ongoing at the moment where they might be getting some help from the research team and kind of seeing the economic forecast and what that's looking like or talking with people from other offices, right? Like say the San Francisco office to see if they have any, any previous work with this client and how it, they can pass that on to us and it can be of help to us. So it's really kind of communicating and seeing what's up. But on the whole, as for the, what the intern does, the intern doesn't really do anything. Uh, you just listen, you don't necessarily participate. At most, maybe the analyst calls me up and says, hey, check the share price of this and tell them or something like that. But it's really minimal participation. 
what you're actually expected to do as an intern is just to take notes. So you just take notes of the meeting and ideally you want to have them ready that when the meeting's over, you send them up as say some kind of a debrief for the meeting. So once the meeting's over between 12 and one, here's basically where I'm supposed to summarize the email and send it out. So that maybe takes me half an hour to do. And then usually after a meeting, they might say, all right, let's meet again at this time or let's try to get in touch with this other department. So basically I'd be in charge of that, more of like admin stuff, if you will. And then if I have some spare time, I'll obviously be working on some of my other projects, right? So between 1 and 1.30, I just put lunch for now. Um, to be honest, that varies a lot. Lunch time varies a lot depending on your workload, whether you have meetings and other things like that. At my worst, sometimes I couldn't really eat, so I would eat around 3 or 4. But usually I would try to get some food in between 1 and 1.30. And I'll just go down to the cafeteria they had, which was a couple floors down, and just get food to go. So I'd actually just eat it in front of my desk. Uh, I know it sounds a bit depressing, but that's pretty much what everyone did, at least everyone at my level. So I thought it was just a normal thing to do. So as you can see, there's no fancy champagne parties or anything like that. No Wolf of Wall Street kind of stuff. Or maybe I just wasn't invited, but who knows. So between 1.30 and 3.30 is when I actually get the edits done. So suppose the analyst previously told me to change that, that slide to something a bit different. Maybe change those graphs and double check the numbers. So that's what I would do. And basically... This time I would pass it on to the analyst, the analyst would say it's okay. Then it would go up the ladder to the associate, maybe the associate has some comments, maybe he says it's okay or she, and then move it up even higher to the VP and see what they have to say. If it's all good, that's that, but usually there's some comments, so it goes back, falls back down to me and I have to make some other minor changes before I can send it back up. So there's a lot of going back and forth between the different people in the hierarchy. And between 3.30 and 4.30 there might be a client meeting and this is fairly ordinary as in it happens maybe they have a call every two weeks or something like that and usually on Goldman's side it would be the associate, the analyst and myself and we'd be talking to the client, seeing how, it, how it's going, um, how the proposal's coming up, coming along and other things like that. So really just kind of a checkup in a way and as for what I was doing there, well uh, you guessed it, I was just taking notes, uh, taking notes, debriefing and maybe looking up a number if it's really necessary, but it wasn't usually the case. So just as the meeting ended, I'll typically have a 15 minute coffee chat set up. So basically my boss at Goldman told me that I had to have coffee with everyone in my team. So that obviously took a while. Uh, so every day I would ideally try to have coffee with someone just to get to know them and essentially build a bit of a culture and yeah, just get to know everyone in the team. It was a bit awkward to ask at first, but I realized that it's something that everyone does in investment banks. So um, why would I do differently, right? So between 4.30 and 7.30, typically the big meetings were done for the day. So basically I could focus on some of the things that did require a bit more, say, thinking. So for instance, it would be things like um, creating an Excel model template or, for instance, updating a model. Say the previous month they did the market research and they needed it updated for this month to send to a client. So I would do that. Other things like that that did actually require a bit of thinking and they did use a bit of my background in, in finance and accounting, right? And then towards 7 p.m. you start to get your hopes up. Uh, you feel like you're doing well with your project and you might be able to leave the office around 10. Uh, that usually wasn't the case though. So between 7.30 and 8, I would typically have dinner. Uh, the cafeteria would actually be closed for dinner, so I actually had to go to the shopping mall right in front and that's usually where I would grab, grab some food in the food court. And I would bring it back to the office, eat it in front of my desk again. But this time around, the markets are already closed and some of the more senior people, like say the managing directors, are usually gone. So it's a bit more of a relaxed environment to eat and you can actually chat with your colleagues. Say. Just after dinner, between say 8 and 11.30, that's when you're finishing up all your tasks that have actually been postponed throughout the day because people had asked you for favors, say. So it might be things like actually replying to the emails, um, updating the PowerPoint or, or the Excel model, other things like that. And that's also typically when an analyst who's really the analyst and the associates are mainly the people that are left after say 10 p.m. They're the ones that might ask you for a favor. They just say, hey, are you busy by the way? And well, you have to be polite, you're the intern, so you just say, yeah, what's up? And they would usually just give you some more work. Sometimes you can reject them, but on the whole, they don't really recommend it as, uh, well, it doesn't look good on you, right? So that's also when the dream of leaving the office by 10 p.m. quickly fades. So at around 11.30, I'll do a final round of just checking if anyone needs help with anything, if I'm already finished with my work. Uh, there's typically a couple analysts left from my group, so I would ask them. And for the most part, they would just say, go home, man, it's already late or something like that which was appreciated, but other times they would say, yeah, actually, uh, I need this, it's pressing for tomorrow, can you stay around? So I would, obviously. Um, at my worst, I think 
I had to come in one day at around 6 30 in the morning mm. and I didn't finish till around 2 30 so that was really my most uh, worked day but for the most part it wasn't that bad sometimes I even got to leave earlier like say around 10 right so in a normal scenario at 11 30 I would be walking back home uh, Goldman did offer a free taxi service but because I live so close by and I actually wanted to get some fresh air for once I would usually just walk back home then I'd sleep and the next day I'd do the same thing over again. Um, for weekends, usually on Saturdays, I wasn't allowed to go into the office. That's a Goldman intern policy apparently. And then for Sundays, I would usually be back at the office, usually doing anything from six hours to 14 hours, something along those lines. So that's a day in the life as an intern in New York City. Uh, take it as a bit of a rough guide because it obviously varies depending on how much work the, the team has but it also depends on location right so for instance new york or london there's some of the bigger uh, financial cities so they always have some work to do whilst if you go to some other smaller cities there's obviously not going to be quite as much work right also the workload does depend a lot on your division so the investment banking division is notorious for having some of the worst working hours while say others like asset management are usually somewhat more chill if you will so yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.